Hey guys, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to take on the microcytic anemias. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched my previous video in which I gave the basic introduction of anemias and how the anemias were classified. So in this video, we'll primarily focus on one type of anemia, one specific type of anemia that are called as the microcytic anemias. So let's start this video. Now you know that the anemias they were classified into three subtypes on the basis of MCV and these were the microcytic anemias in which the MCV was less than 80 micrometer cube. These were the normocytic anemias in which the MCV was between 80 to 100 micrometer cube and these were the macrocytic anemias in which the MCV was more than 100 micrometer cube. Now in this video, we'll primarily focus on the microcytic anemias. So primarily, we'll focus on what are the causes of microcytic anemias and what are the investigations and what are the findings that are found in case of the microcytic anemias. But before understanding the types of microcytic anemias and the causes of microcytic anemias, let's start at or let's look at what is the basic pathogenesis that leads to these microcytic anemias. Now, you know that in the RBC, the only thing that is present is the hemoglobin and that's why the RBC has left all its organelles and even the nucleus. So, in the RBCs, we have the hemoglobin and this hemoglobin, it will decide what will be the size of RBC. For example, let's say that in this RBC, the amount of hemoglobin is X. And now let's say due to any reason, the amount of hemoglobin, it gets halved. So naturally, this RBC will not be as large as this because to accommodate this much amount of hemoglobin, it doesn't require to be this much large, you know. So that's why the RBC will undergo a division so that the concentration of hemoglobin is maintained in the RBC and as a result of this, the RBCs, they will become small. So this is the basic pathogenesis what is derived, driving the microcytic anemias. Actually what happens over there is that due to any reason, the amount of hemoglobin which is produced in the bone marrow in the precursor cells, it is decreased. So as a result of this, the cells which were normally large and produced used in large amount or large number, they will not be as large as they were initially when the hemoglobin is sufficient and they will divide an extra division to become small so that they will accommodate that small amount of hemoglobin in order to maintain its concentration. So that's why the cells are decreased in size and they are called as microcytes and obviously their MCV is less than 80 micrometer cube. Now if you understand this concept, understanding the microcytic anemias will just be a cakewalk and you will not have to like uh, remind or remember the stuff, uh, unusual stuff, okay. So this is the basic scenario or the basic concept of MCV and the extra division which these RBCs go in order to make the concentration of hemoglobin sufficient. Now, what next? Now we have to understand what are the causes or what are the conditions in which the hemoglobin production is decreased. So naturally we will understand what are the causes that lead to these microcytic anemias. So now let's look at how this hemoglobin is produced. Now you know that the hemoglobin consists of two things. One is the heme and other one is the globin. So you have heme and you have globin and these heme and globin they unite to form what is called as hemoglobin. Now you know that this globin is a protein part and there are two chains of globin actually. One is the alpha chain and one is the beta chain and they unite to form the adult hemoglobin which is also called as the HbA. Now next thing is heme. You know that heme consists of two parts again. One is the iron and another one is the protoporphyrin. Now this protoporphyrin is actually the ring that you used to learn in your first year of med school in biochemistry. This is protoporphyrin ring and this protoporphyrin ring will attach with iron in order to form the heme and together heme and globin they will form what is called as hemoglobin and this hemoglobin will be transferred into RBC in order to make the RBC fully functional. 
Now you can make and you can understand what will happen if iron is decreased. Now let's suppose that there is a condition in which iron is decreased. So naturally it will lead to decrease in the heme and therefore it will lead to decrease in the hemoglobin and as a result of this there will be microcytic anemia with MCV less than 80 micrometer cube as I told you earlier. Similarly, the, if there is a condition in which there is a decrease in the globin production, whether it is alpha globin or whether it is beta globin, it will also lead to a decrease in the hemoglobin and as a result of this again there will be microcytic anemia with MCV less than 80 micrometer cube. Similarly, if there is a decrease in the protoporphyrin, that is that ring part, there will be a decrease in the heme and consequently there will be a decrease in the hemoglobin resulting in decrease in the MCV. So these are the three main causes which are responsible for causing the microcytic anemias. So let's write them down. So the first cause that causes the microcytic anemia is what is called as the iron deficiency anemia. So from now onwards, if anybody asks you what, what is the blood picture in case of iron deficiency anemia, without any doubt, just uh, say them or just tell them that it is a microcytic hypochromic picture. Similarly, the next thing or the next condition in which there is microcytic anemia is what are called as the thalassemias. Now these thalassemias are a group of disorders in which there is a decrease in the globin chain production and depending upon which globin is decreased whether it is the alpha globin or whether, whether it is the beta globin we have alpha thalassemias and we have beta thalassemia and whatever may be the type of thalassemia the MCV will be less than 80 micrometer cube and it will be microcytic hypogromic anemia. Now, the third finding or the third condition in which there is microcytic hypochromic anemia is what is called as the sideroblastic anemias. Now, sideroblastic anemias are a type of anemia in which there is a decrease in the formation of protoporphyrin due to numerous reasons. I'll tell you when I'll cover this sideroblastic anemia. So in that case, protoporphyrin is decreased and uh, the downstream effect is microcytic hypochromic anemias. So also in case of sideroblastic anemias, there is microcytic hypochromic anemia. And last but not the least, there is a entity which is called as ACD or anemia of chronic disease. Now, anemia of chronic disease is a special condition because in this case, what happens over there is that Although there are all the resources like there is iron, there is protoporphyrin, there are globins, but the cells, they are not able to use this iron because of some acute inflammatory mediators or molecules which will block the transfer of iron from its storage site to the precursors. So as a result of this, although there is not iron deficiency, but the condition or the system, it behaves like iron deficiency and will cause the microcytic hypochromic anemia. So this is the whole idea about the microcytic hypochromic anemia. Now this was one of the basic introductory video in which I talked about the microcytic hypochromic anemias. Now in next four videos, we'll talk separately about the iron deficiency anemia, the sideroblastic anemia, the anemia of chronic disease and the thalassemias. So if you like this video, uh, so if you like this video, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and also share it among your friends because uh, this is the least that, uh, that you can do for my channel because it will help me grow and uh, like other stuff. So this is the basic scenario. If you have watched this video till now, uh, do like the video. Thank you so much.